we will be going over object-oriented programming, as we said, in Python. Um, if you guys have taken Java or uh, CompSci A, uh, you guys pretty much exclusively deal with object-oriented programming uh, with your classes and objects. Uh, we have been only going over, we've been working on uh, Python basics throughout the year, so we've been going over um, like how to declare variables, what strings are, uh, what different kinds of variables are, what, how to declare functions, um, and that has all been under the kind of umbrella of uh, functional programming. So OOP is object oriented programming, OOP uh, is abbreviated. So we've only been dealing in the realm of functional programming, which was your, your variables and then you have your functions. Um, I have a little comparison between functional programming and object oriented programming here. Uh, so we can quickly go over this, but basically when you have functions, as you know, you put in a parameter to the function and it returns something or it does some action. Um, for every output, um, for every input, there's only one output. Uh, if I was to, if you want to look down here, I have some built-in functions that we've been working with. Uh, absolute value, this is the power, and this is the sum. So if I were to do like absolute value of negative one, it's always going to give, it's always going to return me one, um, no matter, like obviously that's the input and it's always going to return one. It's not going to return um, five for some reason, right? Or negative one. Um, you put in a you put in an input and it's going to return an output. Um, and obviously we have variables and functions and that's kind of what we've, um, the two kind of, uh, you have the data storage part and then the data, you, you use that data to um, carry out some tasks, you manipulate it in some way, right? So we've been, so these variables, they can be uh, strings, uh, integers, doubles, um, characters, lists, right the the it goes on and on and on but um you assign something to the variable and then you do something with a function by passing in that um variable into the uh, parameter of the function so that is the sorry someone's calling me but um that's kind of what we've been working on for up until now data stored in variables and then these are some examples you put in the variable into the parentheses and bam, you have your output. Um, I know we have some new members, so if that, it doesn't really make any sense or um, I'll kind of just quickly gloss over what we've learned throughout this whole time. Um, you guys can go on to the, there's tutorials on the website or um, you can email me asking questions or just you know message me some on Discord or whatever and I can go over everything we've learned so far. Um, but that's all been under like functional programming, which is, it's very simple. Um, uh, it's, 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 it's manageable when you're first getting started. Um, it's relatively easy to just read through the code, but, um, when you get into higher levels, um, a lot of times you're going to use object oriented programming. Uh, so Python is an object oriented programming language, just like Java, C++, C sharp, JavaScript, and Swift. So like already right there, you've got so like most of the major programming languages that you're going to deal with, and they're all object-oriented programming. So we've only been actually dealing with a small portion of um, the actual functionality of Python. Um, the when when you get into it, um, Python is object-oriented. So um, what we learned today is kind of the foundation of um, a lot, pretty much everything you'll do in Java in the future. Um, and also in, uh, sorry, did I say Python, Python, and also obviously in Java, you use a lot of classes and objects. So the new, um, kind of, instead of variables and functions, we have, um, what we call a class, which is kind of like a blueprint. Uh, you can imagine it. And inside the class, there are methods which are similar to functions, but the methods are specific to the classes. So it might, it's a little complicated. But um, we'll, we'll go over like an, an a real world analogy to kind of simplify it. Um, but just like this is kind of a comparison so you can see side by side. And then objects are instances of classes. So um, 
an object is really just something. Uh, if you want to think of it like that, it's when you think of an object in real life, you have like anything is an object, right? There's a monitor in front of me, there's a keyboard in front of me. Um, you drive a car to school, you go to a school, uh, you are a person. They're all these are all objects. And when you're representing uh, like real world objects per se, well, we'll get into it, but you need to um, store some kinds of data, right? You need to, there are attributes, certain attributes here that an object has. Say, um, like, I have a certain hair color, I have a name, I have a height, right? These are all attributes of the object of myself. Uh, so, I am an object, if you want to think of it like that. And this is what, that's kind of what object oriented programming deals with. That's a simplification, but it's just to, um, if you kind of want to wrap your head around what the difference is, if you want to think back to functional programming, what we've been doing, like if you want to create, uh, if you want to model like a person, it would be a little bit, it would be more difficult, right? You would have to have um, either like a, a list or a dictionary. Uh, and it's not, it's, and you could, you could have like a list of dictionaries for each person. Um, to like have multiple people, but it's not the most elegant solution. It's kind of it's kind of difficult, right? So um, if you ever wanted to represent a real world person in or a real world object or any object in programming, um, you want to use um, OOP or OOP OOP. So if you if we if you were um, if you joined in during like the weekly coding um, sessions that we had before in the fall. You'll remember we learned about lists. And list a list is an, is an object, right? So it's built into Python already. But a list is an object, if you want to think of it like that. Um, and lists have methods, right? Um, and if you look at these, there's, there's a difference between um, the built-in functions, which are functions and methods, which have to deal with classes. So if you look at there's, um, they, they, they're similar, right? They have the, the name of the method, the parentheses, but in the front, the difference is they are, are called on an object. Um, and that's what separates a function from a method because these ones don't, you don't need to call it on an object. Um, you just put in a parameter and it gives you an output. This, these different um, for example, index will give you a different value for each different list, each different object, right? If you put, if you sum um, a list, it's going to give you the same output always. But if you put a list, if you put different lists here, um, and you want the index of, say, whatever value, um, it, it could be different for each list you put in. One list, your index, um, say, of like the number zero could be like if you have a list of integers per se, the, the zero could be um, in the beginning of the list or at the end of the list or in the middle of the list. It, it, it could change, right? Your output for this method is going to differ depending on the object you call it on. So that's kind of a, that's, that's kind of a side by side comparison. Uh, if you want to go into the benefits of object oriented programming compared to what we've been doing, is you can use these objects and classes to represent things in real in real whether in the real world kind of what we've been over so you can have an apple that's has certain attributes um, it could be yellow red it could have different um, I guess you would call it uh, varieties of apples so different I don't know if they were species but um, different like breeds of apples right you have the you have Macintoshes you have red delicious you have Fuji's, you have um, Granny Smith's. So these are these will all be attributes of an apple, if you want to uh, think of it like that. And you can have small apples, large apples, rotten apples, uh, fresh apples, frozen apples, juiced apples. Or I guess juiced apples would just be cider. But you know, the the, the point is, an apple could be represented in, in a lot of different ways. And if you want to represent an apple in programming, uh, you would do it. This is how you would do it. Um, it's this is the, the easiest way to do it. So say if you wanted to um, create a program for a real world 
problem, um, object-oriented programming would be useful for you. Um, and we'll go over a, another example in the future that's actually programming and not like uh, having to do with different uh, random objects. Um, and if you if you look down here, like these are these are two of our um, coding club officers. So they're obviously different people, and they're if we say they are objects, no offense, they're people, but we'll say they are objects also. Um, they have different attributes to them. They look different, you know, different heights, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, also, um, if you want a real world example of a method, like a comparison analogy to a method, which is remember, um, if we go back, a method is kind of analogous to a function, but specific to a class. So if you wanted to have, say, a class of um, people or students, so uh, in that class you would have different attributes representing the students and under that you would have you could say because um, objects have uh, functions right they have all well, yeah so they have they have they can do things and interact with things like my keyboard can type things and my mouse can move the pointer and will can will Huang here can um, he can you know eat go to school he can um, take a walk right there's like he's a he's a person so he has he can do things in real world and that would be a um, we could we could say that's a method so um, if you kind of want to think of what we have done so far we have the the class which is the blueprint underneath we have the attributes which is uh, what uh, like different characteristics some object might have and under that we have the methods which is what the um, what the uh, what you, what the object can do, and a lot of times the um, methods will be manipulating the attributes, the uh, whatever the characteristics above. So uh, for for programming purposes, these are kind of the four pillars here: abstraction, inheritance, polymorphism, and encapsulation. So in CS and computer science, these are the the benefits of object-oriented programming compared to what we've been doing so far. So um, I'll just quickly run through them, but if we, we, we can get into it. We're not gonna get into these a lot today because they're, they're more complex, um, but we will be able, you, we could do all of these in Python. And um, if you guys wanna have re like weekly coding sessions where we can just go through these or um, even I can explain them in a general meeting, but they're more, a little more advanced. Um, Abstraction is where you don't necessarily know what's happening inside of your class. Um, for example, like I think in CompSci, the classic example is you don't need to know what is happening inside of your car. Like you don't know what the, you don't necessarily need to know what the ECU is doing, what the engine is doing, what the uh, thermostat is doing, right? Uh, to drive to school, you just need to know that you hit the gas pedal and it goes forward and you can steer with the steering wheel. So I guess you, that would be an, that would be kind of a, an, a real world abstraction. But in programming too, you don't necessarily need to know what's going on inside of your class to use it. Um, for example, if you were creating something and then uh, giving it out to selling it out to customers, um, you, your customers don't care or they might not necessarily understand what's happening inside of the code that you've built. So you can object oriented programming, you can kind of hide that away. You could kind of say, and that gets into encapsulation also, but it, you can kind of hide it away. Um, and so that your, uh, your end user can just have a nice simplified set of um, functions for them to use, uh, methods for them to use. Like if we were to go back, we don't, like I couldn't explain to you how um, absolute power or sum works on the binary level um, because like programming these pro Python is a very high level language if we were gonna get down to ones and zeros I would have no way if I was looking at ones and zeros I would have no way to explain to you guys what it's going on and I would have I like I simply don't know and I don't like at one point I could perhaps know but um, the, the, there's abstractions everywhere right you don't know what's you don't know the exact like binary level what's happening for 
in even like a step above binary and a step above that, what's happening for append, remove, and index. But you don't need to know to use a list properly or to use these built-in functions, right? Because it doesn't matter. Um, you want to achieve a certain task in it, lets you do it. You don't need to know what's happening on the binary level. So that would be an abstraction. Inheritance is um, simply you can uh, have different classes inherit uh, methods. So if I, I can have one method, uh, sorry, I can have one class use another method from another class. So you can, um, you don't have to like copy and paste the code. You can reuse code essentially. Um, polymorphism, you can have uh, one kind of method do different things um, depending on the parameters you put in. And encapsulation is similar to abstraction where you have, you can have, if you want to think of it in um, Java, you can have private and public attributes, um, private and public methods also, right? Because you, you don't necessarily, it's also good for security reasons. You don't also, you don't necessarily need to know the attributes of every single, the values of every single attribute inside of your object. Um, encapsulation just keeps it nice. It keeps it private, um, keeps it secure. And, um, that's one of the, one of the four pillars of object oriented programming. And finally, um, if you're ever going to go into, um, the CS field or, um, like IT CS, um, software engineering, it's used by programmers. So, um, just because it's used by everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you would need to know um, how to use object-oriented programming. So that's about it for the benefits and the comparing it. Um, does anyone have any questions, or is it like does it make does it make sense so far? Does anyone have any questions? We'll jump into the actual code part, but this is the the kind of computer science end of it. William, you want to add anything? No, we did everything. Yeah. All right. Um, and. Like I said, we won't get into, I spelled this wrong, my bad. Um, <laughs> we won't get into um, some of these more advanced topics today, but we can get into them in the future if you guys would like to learn um, getting into deeper into object-oriented programming. But